All right, now we've solved for the reaction forces, and I'm going to show you how to do the method of joints. So uh, start here, and I brought over. I'm looking at joint A first, and let's let me just go back to this guy and and how do I know which joint I want to start at? Well, I could start at a couple of different places, um, but I know from experience that A, I've got an uh, I've got a known. And I know the zero, and I've got a couple of unknowns here as far as these internal member forces. So I have two. I also have two over here at joint C. I could easily start at C or A. I just always work from kind of right to left. And so I know that I can do A first. So when I look at this guy, I got a couple things here, and I, and I encourage you to pause the video and kind of sketch this out. Noticing that I have things that are in the Y in red and the things in the X in green. So I've got this kind of this chart here. And the first thing I look is what do I know? What do I need to know? And when I look here, I've got a known in the Y and I've got ADY uh, that I don't know. And so I can sum of the forces in the Y, remember, has to equal zero. So if I take that T chart and I go, what goes up, it's got to come down. And I can look at that and I go, well, if I've got 975 going up, well, I only have one other force in the Y and it is ADY. And so the way I kind of think about it is I, I might kind of park that here, but I know it's got to go down because I've only got two things. So AD and the Y then has to really be equal to 975. So it's going to be going down. So I'm going to go ahead and got to keep up with your arrows with this method. I'm going to go ahead and mark that as down and I'm going to write 975 here. Okay. Now, um, the next thing that I know is I really am curious about line AD and its sense. And so I've, at this point in time, I can tell you what its sense is. Remember um, that if it's going up, it's this line is either going up and to the right or it's going down and to the left. And if I know that the Y component is going down, then it has to be going down and to the left. It cannot be going up and to the right. So I know this guy's AD line segment is going down and to the left. OK, and that tells me that ADX has got to be going to the left as well. So just off that, I know a lot of things there. Okay, so now let's look and see what we've got here. Well, I have 975, I have uh, an angle, and I wanna know what is 80 in the X, okay? I wanna know what is 80 in the X. Well, when I look at that guy, I'm gonna use this angle here, which I've got 45, and some of you have already done the math at home in your head, but I'm going to use tangent here. So I'm going to say the tangent of, in this case, this 45, and I'm using my formula, is going to be equal to the opposite, which in this case, if I'm looking at this angle all the way across is this, okay? So that is AD and the X divided by 970. Five. So when I look at this and I go, okay, well, what do I need to do to, to solve for that? I can real easily do this same thing here. I can, I, you can either algebraically rearrange it and that's fine. The thing that I like to do is to cheat just to make it super easy is I put this guy in one of these triangles and I say tangent of 45, 975. AD and the X, right? So if I cover that up, well, what do I need to do? I need to multiply those two things together, right? So if I get my calculator, make sure it's in degrees, and I say tangent of 45, okay, multiplied by 975, I get 975. And does that answer make sense? Well, yeah, because it's a 45 triangle. So I should get the same thing, easy peasy. Now, when I look at my triangle, I've solved for all the things. I have now one, two, three things in the X. 
I know two of them, 975 and 0. I just need to solve for AB, okay? So sum of the forces in the X have to equal 0. So I'll make my T chart, and I'll go left, right. Remember, this is really negative, and this is really positive. I knew this number here was going left at 975. All right, well, I've got this guy 0, so it's not doing anything. I don't even have to put it on my T chart. Well, I, that leaves me with A, B. Well, if I park it down here, how do I know which way it's going? Well, it's got to be it's got to be going to the right because I need that this teeter-totter here to balance out. If I've got 975 on this side, I have to have 975 on that side. So we know that A, B, is. we not only know its magnitude at 975, we also know which way it's going, which it is going to the right. Now, it's real important now that I know all this, I'm going to go back to my original chart. And remember, I knew that at joint A, that line segment AD is going down and this one's going that way. OK, which means this one is going that way and it's going this way. So I know looking over here at this one, this one's squeezing, right? This one's squeezing what the internal forces are doing. So that guy there is going to be in tension. This guy here is pushing out, so it's in compression. So I can already tell you those two things without any math. And that's why I like this model, because I don't have to keep up with the positives and the negatives. So that is joint A.